Today, we're going to talk about the biggest scandal in Opus Dei. So the biggest scandal in Opus Dei, in my opinion, is the scandal of the numerary assistants. Numerary assistants are female celibate members of Opus Dei whose sole job is to take care of the residences and retreat centers of Opus Dei. They were originally called servants. Uh, and Jose Maria Escriva, the founder of Opus Dei, as usual, has very nice things to say, beautiful things to say about numerary assistants uh, and their role and their life. And unfortunately, the reality is pretty different. It's pretty harsh. The life of a numerary assistant is pretty much endless manual labor um, with time off for prayer and for eating and not much else. Uh, these women are treated like second class citizens in Opus Dei. Uh, their living conditions, their food uh, is not as good as the other female members of Opus Dei. Is slave labor too strong a description? Yeah, uh, but only a little bit too strong. I'll, I'll try to link to an article or two below uh, describing their lives and some testimony of uh, former numerary assistants. Okay, these women are given no pay, although I think that's changed uh, in part because of lawsuits against Opus Dei. Uh, and in some places, uh, they haven't paid into the social security system. So sometimes these women spend their youth slaving away in centers of Opus Dei. Then they get burned out and leave when they're in middle age and they've got no savings, uh, no retirement, they haven't paid into social security, um, and they really have to start over completely uh, with absolutely nothing. There's a lawsuit happening now in Argentina where 43 former numerary assistants are suing Opus Dei. I think for back pay, I'm not exactly sure what the, what the lawsuit is about. Uh, I haven't followed it closely. You can Google it and, and get the details if you want. Now I understand that Opus Dei in Argentina has set up a listening commission to listen to the concerns and complaints of these 43 former numerary assistants. And it's hilarious in a sad kind of way. Why? Because Opus Dei has a very centralized command and control structure. No one can go rogue in Opus Dei. If you try to go rogue in Opus Dei, you're gonna be out on your butt in like eight seconds. So for Opus Dei in Argentina to try to pretend that it didn't know what was happening is just, it's not credible. That's not how things work in Opus Dei. And lawsuits like this have happened before. I think similar lawsuits have happened uh, in Europe also, uh, leading to some changes. Now, generally women who are numerary assistants are from lower socioeconomic classes. They usually have uh, less education. Um, and the way some of these women have been recruited, especially in South America, is kind of heartbreaking. Um, there's stories about Opus Dei women going into impoverished rural areas, uh, some South American countries, uh, finding teenage girls uh, who are uneducated, promising them education and a better life. But the education is a hospitality school run by members of Opus Dei. Uh, and then these young girls get pressured into joining Opus Dei, and then they spend their lives essentially slaving away uh, as numerary assistants in Opus Dei centers. So there's an account in Opus Libros, which is a website critical of Opus Dei, and it has a number of stories about numerary assistants. Uh, one story I recall, and I, the details are a little bit fuzzy, but the gist of what I'm gonna say is correct. A woman used to be in Opus Dei, and I think she worked for the government of a South American country, and she had access to government jets. Uh, and Opus Dei asked her to help bring some of these young women that they had recruited uh, from the more rural areas uh, into other countries. So like, uh, bringing these women undocumented, uneducated in planes, crossing borders, literal human trafficking. It's just, it's, it's pretty crazy. I read another account again, I, the details are a little bit fuzzy, but the gist of the story is correct. Two, uh, women of Opus Dei went into a rural section of a country of South America and they found a teenage girl who was maybe 16 or so. And I, I believe this, girl's parents had passed away and this 16 year old woman was taking care of all her younger siblings and one of the numeraries was trying to recruit this this girl uh to become a numerary assistant and the other uh, opus day numeraire was like what are you what are you doing like they're all her 
siblings are relying on her to take care of them. And the other numerator said, well, yeah, that means she's like, she's really, uh, really talented and we should have her in Opus Dei. Uh, it's just, it's really wild that someone would even think that way. And in fact, Opus Dei is putting, putting this woman who was trying to recruit this teenage girl, uh, they're trying to promote her cause of, of canonization, her cause of sainthood, which is just, are there numerary assistants in the United States? I think so. I haven't been in Opus Dei for a while. When I was in Opus Dei, there were numerary assistants, at least at Murray Hill, which is the uh, Opus Dei headquarters for the United States, Shelbourne, which is a retreat center uh, in Northern Indiana, and Arnold Hall, which is a retreat center outside of Boston. Opus Dei also used to run a hospitality school in Chicago called Lexington that has closed in 2014, but it used to use that in part to recruit young women to be numerary assistants. I don't know how these young women in the United States are recruited or treated. I just don't know. All of this is pretty bad, but it isn't the worst of it in my opinion. Uh, the biggest scandal in my opinion is this. The way that these numerary assistants are treated, it's not an aberration. Uh, it's not a new development in, in Opus Dei. The way numerary assistants are treated goes all the way back to Jose Maria Escrivá, to Jose Maria Escrivá himself. Uh, Maria Tapia's account of, of her time in Rome and the way numerary assistants were treated uh, by St. Josemaria, St. Josemaria, um, it's kind of unbelievable and you'd have to read it for yourself, but he treated them and spoke of them and spoke to them like, they're, like they were stupid, stupid children. Uh, and these are adult women. Um, uh, for example, there was this rule, you can never leave the, the uh, numerary assistants alone. They always had to be super, supervised by a numerary member of Opus Dei, and apparently it caused a lot of problems and was a big uh, pain in the butt for everyone involved. Uh, a lot of weird stuff. You can check it out in her book. How you treat the most vulnerable says a lot about who you are. I'd say that one of the characteristic features of Opus Dei is treating persons as instruments, and nowhere is this more clear than in the treatment of numerary assistants. I have no idea what Pope Francis thinks about Opus Dei. I don't know if he's aware of the case of the 43 numerary assistants in Argentina, but I do know this. It's a perfect storm of everything Pope Francis hates, taking advantage of the marginalized, the weak, and migrants. Thanks for watching. <laughs>